Okay, so let us begin with something that's known as the ML or the multi-layer uh, feed-forward neural network. And this is built on the MLP that we just, the, the MLP representation that we just uh, saw in the previous video. So let's start building that. The ML feed forward neural network. Okay, so what exactly is this? As we said, we built our entire MLP model based on the XOR function. And of course, this can be generalized to a more uh, generic input where we are looking at like the d-dimensional uh, feature vector or the d-dimensional input that's coming in. And based on that, we are going to update that to a neural network with the addition of the sigmoid function instead of the step uh, sign function that we were using earlier. So that's the only change that's happening here. But why we are focusing too much on this? Because now we are going to come up with a certain representation of every aspect of the neural network. And we'll continue like using that. So the notation is important and we will focus only on the notation in this video. In the lectures that are coming up, we will begin talking about how to achieve or how to get uh, the like whatever parameters we need to estimate or, or find out how to do that. That will be the focus in the next uh, lecture. So let's begin with the first uh, input layer, which is like some bias. And then let's say I have like d-dimensional data, x1, x2, xd. And remember, I'm building on the MLP. So I'll have like three more layers. This is my input layer, which usually is like the zero level layer, input layer. And I'll tell you what the levels mean. So essentially, I'll start counting the layers in this direction starting from zero, right? So this is my zeroth layer. And then the next, if you remember, we had like one, and then we have the sigmoids here. Okay, let's see what they are. And now I'm denoting them by theta. And so let's say this is another one, and this is another one. Okay, so what is going on? The input that comes into here, right, is one perceptron. It's nothing but the, the implementation of the perceptron. And then some output goes out of this. And so there is another layer. Let me first finish the layers. And, and then the final or the final output that was there. And this is layer number three. And this is also known as the output layer. And finally, we have like we can or cannot have the bias depending on whatever problem uh, we have at hand, but let's keep it as generic as possible. So essentially this is layer number one, layer number two, layer number three, also known as the output layer. Okay, so what is happening in every layer? As we proceed forward, right, we have these nodes and these layers and these like arrows are essentially uh, representing the fact that this is the input that's coming in here. And then we're doing something to the input in addition to not just like applying the sign function, we're also like summing them up, we know that, because this is nothing but the perceptron. And then what comes out of these, and of course that, that is going to go into like these different, uh, depending on uh, whatever the problem is, these are going to go from each one of them, right? And they are also going to get some, some input from here and so on. So the, the point that I'm trying to make is like the outcome or the output of these is essentially going to be some sign of my perceptron or whatever comes out of the, the sigmoid that I'm using essentially. So this is what's happening. And finally, we get H of X again, in some ways connected. And that's about it. Okay, now here, I also wanted to talk about how a node is specified. A node is specified by its layer and by its number. All right, what does that mean? For example, this node is denoted by L and I. That means this node is in, in, this is node number I in layer L. And we can use both input and output for this node. Input to this node or output of this node is like depending on the layer number and depending on the, uh, the position of this node. Okay, so now we know that this is the input layer. We know that this is the output layer. And uh, the rest of the layers here, are the hidden layers. These are also known as the hidden layers. Okay, and overall, going back to what we said when we began, we said this is a feed-forward network. 
What does that mean? This is like a feed forward because the output of one layer, for example, the output of this layer feeds into this, and the output of this layer feeds into this, and so on. So this is feed forward in that sense uh, that we can like even have like the, these feeding backwards, and that's known as the recurrent neural network, which obviously is out of the scope of the course. But we can have those options as well, or we can have like this feeding from here in going to here, right? Missing the, the like one of the layers, and that's another variation. But now what we're looking at is the feed forward network. It's like very clear. This is the uh, topological order in the graph that exists because this is like a graph, right? And, and the order is maintained. So we, we say that it's a feed forward network. And let me show you in like a better uh, sort of structured uh, summer, like summary of what we just built. As you can see, this is the input layer here with my feature vector, whatever input I have. And then the second and the third, uh, the first, second and third layers, because this is like layer number zero. So that's why I'm saying. And total number of layers, yeah, by the way, is like L. So if you, whenever you see this big L, just know that this is like the total number of layers that we have. And output layer is exactly going to be equal to L. And this is my edge of X. Now, another thing that we brought up uh, earlier was that instead of the sine function that we had for the original perceptron, now we've replaced it in my neural network with something that's known as the sigmoid. So here is a depiction of what that means. This S-shaped curve, essentially, where this is plus one and this is minus one, is denoting that. All right. And so what, what this does is like essentially this theta of s in most cases is nothing but tan h, the function tan h of s. s being my, I'm going to like talk about that. The input signal is my s, basically. So even before going into that, this is just showing you that we have replaced the sine function with the sigmoid. Let's actually zoom into one of these nodes. Let's say I'm picking up this node, right? Because this is also important to understand that once I'm like picking up this node, right? How like this node here in my overall structure, how does this node kind of um, has the notation? By the way, in this one, we just, okay. So how, yeah, like let's say I pick this, this node up here. In, in general. So how do we uh, denote things around that? Let's let's look at that. So let us assume we have this node here and this is like a theta and there's something coming in and something going out, right? And as I said, a node is denoted by L and I, so that stays. The input signal to this node will be denoted by an S and that explains why we had an S here. And so that is going to be S for layer L and input coming into node i. So S I L is my input signal. Obviously something goes out of this, right? And so the output will be denoted by X and the output of layer L from node i is X L i. So this is the input signal and the output. Uh, think of the like input signal as, for example, um, this is layer number, let's say two, and this is node number three. So this is essentially going to be like S23, right? So that's my input. The output, for example, let's say of output layer zero and node one is going to be X like zero and one. Okay, now this output, this XLI is related to the transform that we just talked about, the sigmoid. Uh, essentially my XIL, the generic one, is the theta of S I L. So this, this is how the output and the input are related to one another. All right, so that's that. In addition to all of this, like the way we denote in the neural network is just like these sigmoids. And so here is my perceptron uh, for my, like for each of the uh, H that we had like H1, H2 remember. So that's how we came to these perceptrons. And then the outcome is essentially the sign or whatever the sigmoid gives out. And if you look at these, these are like some weights on them, right? And so th those weights gets mu get multiplied by the input and we get like a summation here. So that's also like implicitly in there. And so I'm explicitly making that summation here. So that summation will have some kind of input weights. And so those are denoted by W, uh, L. So this W, L means 
coming into layer L. These are the weights. So from previous layer, the perceptrons have weights represented by W, L, J, I. Okay, so what is this J, I? Node J to I. Node J to I. All right. Similar to that, we have like this output after like the computation has taken place. We'll have like the outputs going out. And one of them is going to be my W because they will also have weights and then that gets applied to the next layer and so on. So that will be denoted by WL plus one of, uh, let's say, I to K. So this is like node I to K, right? Uh, these are the weights that are going out. So whenever you see this L plus one, you know that these are the weights that are going out of my layer L. That's why there is that plus. And so there are weights coming in to each node and they are considered to represent a perceptron. And so each node has some set of perceptron weights. And that's why we feel that it's convenient to represent the set of weights as like in a more sort of concise way. For example, for any layer L, my weights or my weight vector, and this is like an uppercase W in most cases, will be something like this. So for node one, L plus one, this is not L plus one, this is L. I'm not talking about L plus one yet. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. And next W2, L, and so on. Let's say we had D uh, dimensional. And so this is W, D, L. And this D will be like the dimension of layer L. So usually we write it as D small L. Okay, what are these? What are these weights essentially? So these weights, like each WLI is like a, this is a, a column vector. This is nothing but a column vector. So basically this WL for every layer is a matrix. Think about it, right? Each of these WLIs is a part of this matrix WL, right? Because this is like for each node and like each, uh, think, of, think of this as like one perceptron essentially, right? So this here is a matrix. All right, so this is my incoming. Similar to that, I'll have like my outgoing, which is like L plus one. And again, the same kind of matrix, except that I'll have like L plus one, specifying like whatever I have. And then depending on if I have like a D dimensional one, depending on like how many I have, this is going to be D L plus one, right? And then again, column vector. So every like set of weights on like every layer here, like some let's say W, uh, one, uh, W, two, and have to be in brackets, right? These are like some matrices, depending on how many nodes I have. And that's what this is denoting. Uh, okay, so that's the weights. And then we have the inputs, S of I. And you can tell that these are going to be like input to layer L, and we'll have the input to every node in that layer L, right? So what does that tell us? That tell us that this is going to be a vector and L, okay, and this is going to be S, L, 1, S, L, 2, going on, S, D, let's say it's D, number of, so input, so for example, this one is input to node 1 in layer L, input to layer, uh, input to node 2 in layer L, yeah. the layer is L. Uh, similarly, we have the output vector, similar to that, like this, this one here. The output vector x of L is going to be, now, now, here the output x will also have that augmented one that's at, that gets added to it in addition to, because we have the w0, the bias term, right? So I'll have that one extra, and then the rest of it stays the same. The output from node one of layer L and so on, the output from the DS node in layer L. All right, so this here is the neural network, that's it. This is all the notation that we need. So notation, a separate set of notation for like every node, and then you can look at the larger picture. And everything is summarized here. So this is my neural network. This is my entire neural network that has been derived uh, by doing some updates to my MLP right? And this is like the feed forward 
a network because we know why it's moving only in one direction everything like input to output and what we have looked at until now is not how to uh, get the mathematical outputs here but rather just the representation the mathematical representation of every parameter of every uh, element in my network so that's why we zoomed into like one of the nodes and here is is everything uh, where like some of the things that we really need to understand is that for every layer we'll have this matrix wl which will have these column vectors because these are the perceptrons uh, we we'll always have to remember that and this is how we denote them. And so the dimension of WL is going to be DL minus one plus one. Why? Because we'll have as many rows, right? And DL is, is these uh, columns. Similar to that for L plus one, we'll have some kind of a similar uh, dimension matrix. We'll talk more about this in the next uh, lecture when we dig deeper into how to like fit this neural network. So for this lecture, uh, that's it. We just wanted to uh, kind of understand the notation and the representation of the neural network. Uh, and uh, that's it. Thank you.